please, please, get your authorized version of the scriptures. And follow me along in the scriptures that we will look at today. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures we will be looking at today. Follow, follow me along, check me out, keep me accountable. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Read context! Please. Please. This is not for your entertainment. Please. Get the scriptures. Not a Roman Catholic Bible like the NIV or the New American Standard or the ESV. No. Get the Word of God, the authorized version. Follow me along, please. We're going to begin with Psalm 119, Mem, verses 103 and 104. How sweet are thy words unto my taste! Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Look at that. Look, look at this filth. The, the Jesuit dog collar. Ask a Marian. Filth. Vile scum. Psalm 119 A.N. Verses 127 and 128. Therefore I love thy commandments above gold, yea, above fine gold. Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. Psalm 36. Psalm 36. Did you read the third proverb yet? The proverb of the day? Hmm? On your own time, if you haven't done this, why? Why? Uh, proverbs 3, verses 13 on verse 19. <laughs> Talks about wisdom and understanding. Fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. And in Proverbs 3, verses 13 on verse 19, you see about you see the the beauty of wisdom, the fear of the Lord, and departing from evil, which is understanding, how that wisdom and understanding is comparable unto a beautiful woman. Which ain't Mary. But Psalm 36, verses 1 on verse 4. The transgression of the wicked saith within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes. For he flattereth himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He hath left off to be wise and to do good. He deviseth mischief upon his bed. He setteth himself in a way that is not good. He abhorreth not evil. I'm going to warn you. We are going to you see this video. Is calling Mary the Queen of Heaven blasphemy? The actual Mary that is uh, given to you in the authorized version of the scriptures, okay, the mother of Jesus. Um, and by the way, the scriptures, the scriptures nowhere say mother of God. Mary is not the mother of God. Jesus is God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. But Mary is not the mother of God. Mary was the chosen vessel in which Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. 
God manifest in the flesh. Okay? All right? But is calling Mary the Queen of Heaven blasphemy? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But what Mary are, are we talking about? And this Queen of Heaven, we, we are going to address this today. I am going to warn you right up front. You are going to see me get angry today. And not only are you going to see me get angry today, but you are also most likely going to see me get hostile today. I know a lot of you have a problem with uh, when uh, I get hostile. I know you do. And when it comes when it comes to this especially of what we are going to go through this video if this does not as the church of the living God if this does not make you irate if this does not light a fire a spark of righteous indignation you need to read first Corinthians uh, second Corinthians chapter 13 you need to examine yourself you're one of these lukewarm Christians and this doesn't offend you but you're you're more offended at the fact that this blasphemous scum you're more offended that I'm getting hostile towards this evil you need to examine yourself I hate every false way I hate here let, let me let me put the nail in my coffin I hate Catholicism I can't wait for the day when our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, in Revelation chapter 18, which we will be looking at a portion of today. I can't wait until our Lord Jesus Christ destroys Catholicism. I hate Catholicism. I don't hate the Catholic, the person, spirit, soul, body. If a Catholic, which most of them have, have made their choice to serve Satan, they are my enemy and we have to hate them with perfect hatred. Okay, if they are the chosen enemies of our Lord, they are our enemies. Again, I know a lot of you have a problem with that. You take your problem up with God in His Word, the authorized version of the Scriptures. Okay? But like I said, you're going to see me get angry today. You're going to see me get hostile today, and I make no apologies. This doesn't make you irate. I, I, I have doubts of you. Whoever you are. Okay? We're also going to be we're going to be in the scriptures today. We're going to <laughs> uh, we're also going to look into the Catholic Bible catechism. Okay, brother, thank you for your advice and your recommendations. Uh, what you gave me about the catechism already was going to read. Thank you very much. Also going to look at a portion from Brother Alberto Rivera's testimony. And we are going to read a portion from uh, Miss, uh, excuse me, His Holiness's uh, least favorite book, uh, The Two Babylons. Okay? Uh, this is His Holiness's uh, least favorite book because it tells the truth about, uh, never mind, never mind. Waste too much time on that guy anyway. Okay. I have to warn you, if you are of the Church of the Living God, this is going to make you irate. And if this does not make you irate, I have a lot of doubts about it. I really do. Prepare yourself. This, this, um, my, uh, the enemy, my enemies, my enemies, who work for the Vatican, who claim that, you know, they're King James Bible-believing Christians and like chatting, uh, to keep up your facade, this content ought to make you irate. Do something about it. But, you know, because remember, you got to put on the facade that you're of us, right? This ought to make any... Anyone who claims to be a Christian, this ought to make irate. If it doesn't, enough of my yammering. Prepare yourself. I sent this to a couple of the brethren. <laughs> and for those of you, um, my trusted brethren... Um, who I have fellowship with. Um, the earlier portion, a uh, uh, portion of the notes, are not going to be used in this video. That'll be for another video because 
it kind of it's it's good, but it's not going in the flow with what this video and what we're going to be talking about. Those who uh, those brethren, they know what I'm talking about. But yes, I'm stalling because this this is extraordinarily vexing. Here we go. Hi, I'm Father Chris Aylar at the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy, and welcome to Ask a... Father! Okay, right, right away, Father! Jesuit! You scumbag! You vile wretch! You vomitous! Oh, This man is our enemy. This man is our enemy. Father! Matthew chapter 23, verse 9. Uh, actually, actually, let's uh, read verses 5 on to verse 10 in Matthew chapter 23. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets. To be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But be not, but be not ye called Rabbi, for one is your master. That's what Rabbi means, even Christ. And all ye are brethren. And call no man Father upon the earth, for one is your Father, which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. Verse 9. Well, the Catholic will say, well, what? Does that mean that we're not, you know, supposed to call our biological father, father, so they come up with the word daddy? No. This is not what that's talking about. This is talking about verse 9, and call no man your father upon earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. And Paul even mentions about honor thy father and mother. It's not talking about you calling your biological father your father. It's talking about ascribing to a man a religious title of father. Like this scoundrel scum. Father so and so. Father so. That is what verse 9 is talking about. When man ascribes to himself a title of father so and so. That is what verse 9 is talking about. Okay, because if it was talking about you can't call your biological father your father, that would mean a contradiction with even the doctrine which is for us today within the Paul and Epistles. Okay, and they come up with something cute and say, Well, we can call him daddy then or papa, right? Shut up. No, this is talking about ascribing to someone the title of father so and so. Okay, title. Apostle, prophet, teacher. Okay? Those are not titles to be taken. Those are descriptive positions, not titles. That man, you don't call someone Pastor so and so. Okay? Pastor this. Or uh, Psalm uh, 111. Psalm 111, which is, which just, ugh. When I hear this, I immediately pounce on it. Every time I hear this, in, uh, out there or anywhere. I immediately, as you ought to. Uh, Psalm 111, verse 9. He, uh, actually, actually, let's read verses 7 on to verse 10. The works of his hands are verity and judgment. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. He sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding, departing from the evil, have all they that do his commandments, his praise endureth forever. And you read in Job 28, 28, And unto man he said, The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Holy and reverend is his name. Reverend so-and-so. That's blasphemy. Ascribing to yourself or men ascribing to you titles. 
that's what that is talking about. Right away, this guy is uh, a, is blasph blaspheming scripture. Okay? So, let's continue. Not even 11 seconds in. Marion. Carl from Cottonwood, Arizona asks, I keep getting questioned by my non-Catholic friends about Mary. For example, they say the assumption is not in the Bible. And, and you're right. The assumption of Mary. <laughs> it's not even in a Bible. You want to know what else? The assumption. I think that came into being in what? 1950s or something like that. Okay. The assumption is not even found within the Apocrypha. And you read the, the book of Sirach. Okay. Um, or Ecclesiasticus uh, or, or Maccabees that's where Catholics get a lot of their main doctrine okay but yes the assumption is not even in a Bible it sure is not in the scriptures the only assumption up there uh, is of our Lord Jesus Christ God our Father okay alright calling Mary the Queen of Heaven is blasphemy how should I respond? It is. Well, Carl, about this Queen of Heaven, we're going to address that uh, later in this video. Okay, we are going to address that. So you know, okay, but let's continue. We covered the assumption last week, and since the coronation, or the Queenship of Mary, is coming up this Sunday on August 22nd, let's talk about that one for a minute. And it's the month of August. <laughs> All right. In Christian tradition, long before there were any Protestant religions um, out there, the Trinity was often depicted as... Look at that. Look at that. The Trinity is satanic. Okay? We talked about that in the previous video. Okay? The Trinity, that Trinity diagram, is a depiction of the matrix, of the female matrix, the female reproductive... Uh, uh, system okay it's blasphemy look at that look at that and boy don't that Mary look very Caucasian I hate every false way if you got a problem with me being angry go away okay seriously I love you you got a problem? Take it up with the Lord. What do you think he's going to be doing during the time of Jacob's trouble? Casting uh, in his anger, judging this earth. For seven years. I'm not God. No, God forbid, no. But, um, <laughs> blasphemy. Placing a crown on Mary's head. This sacred tradition, which Paul talks about in 2 Thessalonians 2.15, recently <laughs> this, is, this is a standard Catholic answer. Uh, they talk about what well, Paul talks about the traditions. The ignorance of God's word is one of Satan's greatest weapons. Okay? Catholics are not encouraged to read even their Bibles because even the Bibles debunk this okay but you might well the, they say we are to read the Bible yes but what do they tell you don't read too much of it because if you read too much of it you might go out, get into heresy because you need to go to a Jesuit priest in order to for them to explain to you what you are reading never mind the Holy Ghost who will lead us and guide us into all truth. And the Lord is that spirit. God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. No. What does the Catholic teach? Their congregant. Oh yeah. Oh, you should read. Go ahead. Read the Bible. But don't, don't read too much of it. Because if you do, you, you might get into heresy. So you got you to gotta come to us with the Bible that you're reading. So we can explain it to you. <laughs> This, uh, this this is this is laughable. This is you know this is stu this is truly stupidity. Okay, and see, see, 
God, the ignorance of God's word, the Jesuit order is using against the poor Catholic person, spirit, soul, and body, who don't don't read the scripture and their Bibles that they read, they gotta go to their Jesuit priests for them to tell them what it means because they have not the Spirit of God living within them. But okay, Second Thessalonians chapter two, okay? Second Thessalonians chapter two. Let's read <laughs> from verse nine. Verse nine under verse seventeen in Second Thessalonians. A little context. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Yeah, go to your Jesuit Catholic priest and do whatever penance and say Hail Mary full of grapes, blessed be the fruit of the loom, or whatever like that. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, you go to your priest and he'll absolve you from anything, right? Give me a break. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. And you Calvinists, blow it out your nose. Chosen, you are, uh, you are of the chosen when you go to God on His terms, the way of the cross. When you come to Him on His terms, broken of your self-righteousness, having godly sorrow, contrition, because it's your fault, and in fear of the Lord, you call upon His name. Hence, you go His way to obtain His salvation, His gift, by His grace, okay, yes, you are of the chosen. Not this blasphemous um, uh, Calvinism or this stupidity uh, like heretics like Mark the Mess tells you about, okay? But let's continue. Whereunto He called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which uh, the tra wait, wait, I just lost my the traditions which ye have been taught whether by word or our epistle now the, our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God even our Father which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace comfort your hearts and, es and establish you in every good word and work and, and look at um Verse 2 in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us. The traditions that Paul is talking about are number one. The traditions, okay, what he said directly in the book of 1 Thessalonians, okay, 1 Thessalonians, the traditions, or also here in 2 Thessalonians. The traditions that Paul are, is talking about are the traditions established within this dispensation, okay? The time of the Gentiles. This time of the Gentiles, which is the time of the Church of the Living God, which is comprised of both Jew and Gentile, okay? The traditions that Paul is talking about are the ones founded within the scripture, within the doctrines pertinent for us today in this dispensation. That is the traditions that Paul is talking about. And the Catholic take their tradition and bring in pagan Babylonian Babylonianism. Okay? They bring in this garbage. Okay? This they call tradition, okay, and stuff like that. All right, that is not the that is not the tradition that Paul our apostle is talking about. No, it is not. Go to Acts chapter fifteen. Acts chapter fifteen. Okay, the traditions that Paul is talking about are the ones marked in Scripture. The traditions of the Catholic go 
far beyond scripture. He already said it. By sacred tradition, Mary went up to heaven. Mary was sinless. Mary was a virgin. Lies. And they are trying to say, this schmuck is saying, oh, Paul is talking about we saying it's okay that Mary was went up to heaven and sinless and was only a virgin, and was ever a virgin. And like, no, those are not the traditions that's Paul, that Paul is talking about. Okay? He's talking about the ones founded in Scripture. The traditions of Catholicism are not founded on Scripture. They are founded within the pagans. You and your Christ Mass. And the Assumption of Mary. Okay? It's pagan. And this schmuck, this scoundrel devil, is attributing their tradition onto what Paul the Apostle said. Oh. Oh. And we, we, we haven't really started going yet. Acts 15, verses 24, under verse 29. Yesterday when I saw this, I, I was even more hostile. And my wife, uh, we're, I'm, in, I'm right now in uh, our brother Alexander's room. And um, she's like, Brad, you need to chill. Okay. <laughs> but Acts chapter 15, verses 24, under verse 29. Check this out. Okay. For as much as we have heard that certain when that certain which went out from us, but yet they were not of us. For if, uh, for if they had been with us, no doubt they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be manifest, be made manifest that they were not all of us. The following way, okay? Uh, for as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying, Ye must be circumcised and keep the law to whom we gave no such commandment. Words to no prophet. Okay? It seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Bar Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth, for it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things that ye abstain from meats offered to idols the Catholic wafer cookie okay and others of course but that's what I immediately think of and from blood abracadabra hocus pocus the wine is now blood Okay, and from things strangled and the thorns and, uh, and snares coming up and choking the word. Things strangled. Therefore, I hate every false way. Okay, and from fornication, from which if you keep yourselves from which if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well, fare ye well. Okay? All right? Stuff for us today, pertinent for this dispensation. Okay? And this stuff here, uh, fornication, things strangled, blood, drinking of blood, and then that that's <laughs> covers all dispensations, actually. Okay? Because drinking blood, for example, was not okay in any dispensation. Okay? Uh, the thing about eating meats offered onto idols, if you don't know that it's something offered onto an idol, that's fine. But when you find out that it's offered onto an idol, Paul mentions this, then you shouldn't eat that for conscience sake. For those who offer it to uh, you, and also for you yourself. If you were to eat it today, that doesn't mean that you have, you're going to go to hell or lost your salvation. No, because all things are sanctified by prayer. Uh, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, Paul talks about that. Uh, how the dietary restrictions under the law are done away with. Yes, you can have bacon and a pork sandwich, eh? Okay, yes you can. But if something is offered onto an idol and you know it, you shouldn't eat it. If you eat it anyway, you're not going to lose your salvation or go to hell. Okay, but you shouldn't eat it anyway. All right, 
Why? Because you're giving credence unto those people who offered it unto an idol that it's okay. Hence, abusing the liberty that you have. See? Okay? Like when people want to worship on Christ Mass, the God of the Catholic. Yes, you have the liberty to do so. But it's giving credence unto paganism that it's okay. Okay? But these, these traditions, where are they founded upon? Scripture. Not Babylonianism, Egyptian um, heresy, or Catholicism. No. Strictly upon Scripture. And also, Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. Okay? Galatians chapter 1. I can get there. Like I said, I, I, I watched this yesterday and I was just, I was screaming <laughs> at this guy <laughs> to the point where my wife's like, hey Brad, yes, you're right. Uh, Galatians chapter 1? Galatians chapter 1? Uh, okay? Uh, let's see. Uh, verses 10 on to verse 14. For do I now persuade men... Or God persuading men? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that, I, that beyond measure I persecuted the Christians Oh, excuse me, the church of God and wasted it and profited in the Jews' religion above many of my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. And of course, when it comes to that, we go to Mark chapter 7, okay? Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7, verses 9 on to verse 15. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject. Full well ye reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own tradition. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother. <laughs> okay. And whoso curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, If a man shall say to his father or mother in his corbin, that is to say, a gift. By whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered. And many such like things ye do. Okay? The traditions that Paul is talking about are founded within Scripture pertinent unto our dispensation today. Okay? He's lying to you. And you people are who are so ignorant of the Scriptures, you're falling right into their trap. Oh, let's continue. Let's hold fast to the traditions that I show you or teach you, both oral and written. This is why the Catholic Church celebrates the memorial of the coronation every year. This year, however, it falls on a Sunday. And since it's not to the level of a solemnity, it's actually not celebrated. Well, okay, maybe not liturgically, but we still should in our heart. But again, it is usually celebrated every August 22nd. It has been placed eight days, remember that, the power of an octave, it's placed eight days after the Solemnity of the Assumption, which was August 15th, completing an important octave of Our Lady. Now, you saw that. That's nowhere in Scripture. That's not even in the Apocrypha or in the Bible. Okay? Galatians chapter 1. Again, verses 8 on to verse 10. Uh, let's read verses 8 and 9. Excuse me, because we already read verse 10. 
But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. As we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. Now, it shows the bond between Mary's queenship and her glorification in body and soul next to her son. God assumed Mary into heaven. And then Jesus took her to a throne on his right hand side and crowned her queen of heaven. Where is that? No, he didn't. No. Uh, you know where that comes from? We're going to look at this a little later. It comes from Babylonian, the Babylonian religion, which is basically what Roman Catholicism is. The Babylonian religion. Okay? Uh, and also here, I'll go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Verses 1 on to verse 4. Okay? Would to God ye could bear me, bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, okay, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth, preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Preaching another Jesus and another gospel, this guy is. Okay? All right. Actually, while we're here, I'm going to be reading to you something from the two Babylons. Okay? The two Babylons. All right, we're going to be reading here a little bit. Uh, let me see. Well, here. What's on this side here is what I'm going to be reading you. Not all of it, just a portion of it. Okay? I know you can't really see it. Uh, there is a PDF for this on the channel. I'll uh, go to the about section. Okay? But this is where this, what he is talking about, this is where this comes from. This is section three, the mother of the child. Now, while the mother derive, derived her glory in the first instance from the divine character attributed to the child in her arms, the mother in the long run practically eclipsed the son. At first, in all likelihood, there would be no thought whatsoever of ascribing divinity to the mother. There was an express promise that necessarily led mankind to accept that at some time or other. The Son of God, in amazing condescension, should appear in this world as the Son of Man. But there was no promise whatever, or the last shadow of a promise, to lead anyone to anticipate that a woman should ever be invested with attributes that should raise her to a level with divinity. It is in the last degree improbable, therefore, that when the mother was first exhibited with the child in her arms, it should be intended to give divine honors to her. And who did the wise men, when they came to see Mary, who did they worship? Did they worship her? No, they worshiped the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? She was doubtless used chiefly as a pedestal for the upholding of the divine son and holding him forth to the adoration of mankind and glory enough it would be counted for her alone of all the daughters of Eve to have given birth to the promised seed the world's only hope yes that's what it means when she says all shall call me blessed not meaning that man that people will call me a divinity a goddess 
Okay? But while this, no doubt, was the design, it is, it is a plain principle in all idolatries that that which most appeals to the senses must make the most powerful impression. Now the Son, even in his new incarnation, when Nimrod was believed to have reappeared in a fairer form, was exhibited merely as a child, without any very particular attraction, while the mother in whose arms he was was set off with all the arts of painting and sculpture. And wouldn't you know that Catholicism... Look at, look at that! Look at the background picture there! Okay? Enough said! All right? <clears throat> As invested with much of that extraordinary beauty which in reality belonged to her, the beauty of Semiramis, the Queen of Heaven, as talked about in Jeremiah chapter 44, which we will be looking at. D uh, Diana of the Ephesians. Okay? The beauty of Semiramis is said on one occasion to have quelled a rising rebellion among her subjects on her sudden appearance among them. And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed as an angel of light. Okay? Making sin look beautiful. Feminism is cancer, dear people. And it's ironic because the son of perdition is a man. The trinity that will be on the earth, the satanic trinity that will be on the earth during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's male. See, feminism is against the order of God. And Jesuitism promotes feminism, the worship of Mary. Okay? <clears throat> And it is recorded that the memory of the admiration excited in their minds by her appearance on that occasion was perpetuated by a statue erected in Babylon representing her in the guise in which she has fascinated them so much. Uh, you've heard of Fatima, right? Now we're going to read a little bit more of this, but we're going to continue. Okay? We're going to continue with this. You have heard of the thing called uh, Fatima, right? Okay? Let's continue. Well, Father, where is this in the Bible? Show me in the Bible where this is. Well, we also talked about that last week. That just because something isn't in the Bible doesn't make it false. <laughs> Yea, hath God said. Talking about the Assumption of Mary. And that uh, Jesus and this, this satanic nonsense, the grotesque trinity doing that to... That, 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 that's what this is, dear people. That's what this is. Okay? That's all that is. And he's right. What, what these devils are teaching about Mary, their Mary, which is the Queen of Heaven, we'll, we'll get to that, is not even in a Bible. That's why the Catholics don't want you to read their Bibles, but go to them to explain what it means. Yea, hath God said. Right in front of your face, people. Okay. We have to look at the fact that Jesus is the king in the line of David. Yes, that's and true. in the Davidic kingdom, who was the queen? Well, it's interesting, because the king had many wives. So... Who was the queen? Was it the first wife? The oldest wife? The prettiest wife? No, in the Davidic kingdom, the queen is the mother of the king. See 1 Kings 2.19. You heard that! The queen is the mother! And what did he do? 1 Kings 2. 2. Okay, First Kings 2. Go there. Let's do what this schmuck won't do. Okay? <laughs> you, y'all should have heard me yesterday. <laughs> I keep my window shut. Uh, neighbors from two counties away could have heard me yesterday. Okay? Screaming at this devil. Okay. 
All right. So, uh, First Kings chapter two. Let's read verses. What did he say? Verses. He said um, uh, verses nineteen on, and we will be reading to verse twenty-five. Here, let's rewind this a little bit. Okay. This wife. No, in the Davidic kingdom, the queen is the mother of the king. See 1 Kings 2.19. 1 Kings 2.19, okay. Bathsheba, therefore, went on to King Solomon to speak unto him for Adonijah. Adonijah wanted, what was it? Um, Haggith. Uh, Adonijah, the son of Haggith, okay, wanted um, the concubine who slept with David, not sexually, but that he would stay warm when he was an old man. Hence, if Adonijah was given that concubine, the, the people would see that because that concubine slept in the bosom of David to keep him warm. He did not know her, meaning he didn't have any sexual relations with her. But see, that visual thing would attribute unto Adonijah the kingdom when the kingdom was promised unto Solomon. Okay. Bathsheba therefore went unto King Solomon to speak unto, uh, unto him for Adonijah. And the king rose up to meet her and bowed himself unto her and sat down on his throne and caused a seat, not a throne, to be set for the king's mother. And she sat on his right hand. Okay. Then she said, I desire one small petition of thee. I pray thee, say me not nay. And the king said unto her, Ask on, my mother, for I will not say thee nay. Okay? <laughs> and they say, Jesus never said no to his mother. <laughs> Do you know in Scripture, our Lord Jesus Christ never referred to Mary as his mother? The only one that people claim to cling to, Son, behold thy mother. Talking about when the Apostle John took Mary to be as his mother. Okay? Jesus never referred to him as mother. Referred to her as mother within the pages of Scripture. Prove me wrong. Okay? But, and he said, and she said, Let Abishag, that's the name, the Shunammite, be given to Adonijah thy brother to wife. Now, this this. Puts use the uh, verse nineteen without any context uh, about you know how uh, Bathsheba was made queen, huh? And uh, and also how never to deny what his mother said. Jesus never referred to Mary as his mother in the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay, woman. Okay, woman. He said unto John, son, behold thy mother. Alright? But, and like I said, Adonijah wanted uh, Abishag. Why? Because she lay in the bosom of David to keep him warm. David never had any relations with her sexually. But in taking Abishag for him to wife, that would, in the eyes of the people, elevate him to the heir when it's actually Sol Solomon. And Solomon was hip to this. Check this out. Verse 22. And King Solomon answered and said unto his mother, Why dost thou ask Abishag the Shulamite, Shunammite for Adonijah? Ask for him the kingdom also, for he is mine elder brother. Even for him, and for Abiathar the priest, and for Joab the son of Zariah. Then King Solomon sware by the Lord, saying, God do so to me, and more also, if Adonijah have not spoken this word against his own life. Now therefore, as the Lord liveth, which hath established me, and set me on the throne of David my father, and who hath made me an house, as he promised, Adonijah shall be put to death this day. And King Solomon sent by the hand of Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and he fell upon him that he died. But see, see, Jesuit, Catholic, wants to keep people ignorant. Of the truth of Scripture, Satan's greatest weapon, and also on this, First uh, Kings chapter fifteen. Okay, First Kings chapter fifteen. The queen was always the mother. 
verses 9 on to verse 15. In 1 Kings chapter 15. And in the twentieth year of Jeroboam king of Israel reigned Asaph over Judah. And forty and one years reigned he in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Makkah, the daughter of Absalom. And Asa did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord as David his father. And he had took away the Sodomites out of the land and removed all the idols that his fathers had made. As we addressed in the previous video, sodomy was uh, very much a part of the ritual of the worship of pagan de uh, deities. Verse 13, And also Maka, his mother, even her he removed from being queen. And was not Asa in the line of David? But we just read it! This guy's lying to you about Mary, okay? Because she had made an idol in a grove, and Asa destroyed her idol and burned it in the brook Kidron. But the high places were not removed. Nevertheless, Asa's heart was perfect with the Lord all his days. And he brought in the things which his father had dedicated, and the things which himself had dedicated into the house of the Lord, silver and gold and vessels. Okay. Let's continue. Now she had the function of counselor to the king in regards to many matters. Since Jesus comes from the line of David, why would he <laughs> We just read the context. Counselor to the king. She counseled Solomon. Hey, give Adonijah uh, Abishag. Did Adonijah listen to her? No. answer is he wouldn't wait 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 okay hold on, hold if on. this is comes from the line of David why would he change this the answer is he wouldn't and he didn't if the queen was the king's mother and Jesus is now the king look at that the circle around the head nimbus signifying deity and the head over the little baby Jesus. Okay. Back to the two Babylons. Uh, this Babylonian queen was not merely in character coincident with the Aphrodite, Aphrodite of Greece and the Venus of Rome, but was in point of fact the historical origin of that goddess that by the ancient world was regarded as the very embodiment of everything attractive in female form and the perfection of female beauty for the San Conchathon assures us that Aphrodite or Venus was identical with Astarte and Astarte being interpreted as none other than the woman that made towers or encompassing walls, i.e. Semiramis. You see some depictions of the Roman Catholic Mary with these big things on her head, like looks like a city, right? Because it's Semiramis, the queen of heaven, okay? The queen of heaven, Semiramis, uh, Diana of the Ephesians, okay? The Roman Venus is, as is well known, was the, the Cyprian Venus and the Venus of Cyprus is historically proved to have been derived from Babylon. Now, what in these circumstances might have been expected actually took place if the child was to be adored, much more the mother. The mother, in point of fact, became the favorite object of worship. Okay? Now, let's get back to this video. It is fitting that Mary is the queen mother. And if Jesus is the king of heaven, 
That makes Mary the Queen of Heaven. So, Queen of Heaven, or in Latin, Regina Caeli, is one of the many titles used for Mary in sacred tradition. In sacred tradition? Sacred tradition. And the Catholic takes tradition over scripture every single time. They even teach it at Jesus Lord. Okay? You know, as Catholics, we often get criticized for that prayer, Hail Holy Queen. This is blasphemy. No, as you can see, it makes sense. This does not mean that we... Makes sense. Makes sense, huh? Makes sense. Uh, well, first of all, let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. Okay? 1 Timothy chapter 2. Come on. 1 Timothy chapter 2. We want verses 19. Why am I looking at? Verses 3 and 6. On to verse 6. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men who are Calvinists. <laughs> Calvin! <laughs> you Calvinists! Here, here's your. Okay? No. Who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. But not everybody is going to come according to the way God wants them to come, according to his standard. So many of them boot the so many of them boot the door and shout through the crack. Okay? <laughs> Thank you for the phrase, by the way. Alright. For there is. Don't, don't look at me. Okay. Look at that verse. Okay? Together. Okay, let's read this together. I'm learning to read slowly. Read this out loud. I don't care if you're at, uh, at the work site on lunch break or you're watching on your cell phone. I don't care. I don't care if your mommy and daddy are in the next room. I don't care. All right? Let's read this together out loud. Okay? Come on. Here we go. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. One God who is comprised of spirit, soul, and body. And one mediator between God and man. And God and men, the man Christ Jesus who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. <coughs> but, see, see, you want to know what this guy's doing here? You want to know what this guy's doing? Here, let's, uh, uh, Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Verses 8 and 9. Beware! Lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. For in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, spirit, soul, body. <sighs> oh, and while we're at it, go to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Now, I have not checked this in other, uh, in, in the Bibles. I have not checked this verse, so you might want to do this. Um, Acts chapter 1, verse 14. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication, with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Doesn't say mother of God. Does it? Well, Jesus is God, yes. Yes, he is. But it does not say Mary, the mother of God. It says Mary, the mother of Jesus. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. The flesh? Okay. The... the skin suit 
That's what Mary was the mother of. And that's what Catholics worship. Okay? Let's continue. Worship Mary. Catholics don't worship Mary, and we never have and never will. Uh, they don't worship Mary? Really? Thank you for this, by the way, brother. Uh, they, he just said, Catholic... Well, here, 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 here. Let's rewind it just a second. Okay. There we go. Chip Fulton Machine used to uh, say... Th and this guy... Okay. Here, here, let's... See, it makes sense. This does not mean that we worship Mary. Catholics don't worship Mary, and we never have and never will. You know, as... <laughs> Thank you for this too, by the way, brother. Isaiah chapter 44. Okay? Isaiah chapter 44. Okay? Isaiah chapter 44. Where we want? Uh, uh, let me see. Uh, verses 14 on to verse 18 in Isaiah chapter 44. He heweth him down cedars, and taketh the cypress and the oak, which he strengthened, strengtheneth for himself among the trees of the forest. He planteth an ash, and the rain doth nourish it. Then shall it be for a man to burn, for he will take thereof, for he will take thereof and warm himself. Yea, he kindleth it and maketh bread. Yea, he maketh a god and worshipeth it. He maketh it a graven image and falleth down. There too, he burneth part thereof in the fire. With part thereof he eateth flesh. He roasteth roast, and is satisfied. Yea, he warmeth himself, and saith, Ah, I am warm. I have seen the fire. We walk by faith, not by sight. Okay? And the residue thereof he maketh a God. This was really good too, by the way, brother. Thank you. Even his graven image, he falleth down unto it, and worshipeth it, and prayeth unto it, and saith, Deliver me, for thou art my God. They have not known nor understood. For he hath shut their eyes, for God will deliver them. You know, they don't love the, uh, they don't have a love of the truth. Therefore God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie. For he hath shut their eyes, that they cannot see in their hearts, that they cannot understand. As Bishop Fulton Sheen used to say, millions of people hate what they think is the Catholic Church, but very few, if any, hate what is actually the Catholic Church. <laughs> There are not 100 people in the United States who hate the Catholic Church, but there are millions of people who hate what they wrongfully perceive the Catholic Church to be. The Catholic Church is Satan's church. And this guy actually says the truth, but there are millions of people who hate what they wrongly perceive the Catholic Church to be. Uh, the Catholic Church is Satan's church. Okay? There are not 100 people in the United States who hate the Catholic Church. You're right. You're right. You're right. Because with ecumenicalism, and Catholics are Christians, right? We all, all you Christians, you all serve the same God. One God made of three people, three persons. <laughs> I hate the Catholic Church. I know what uh, the Catholic Church is. It's Satan's church. And the Lord has allowed me to warn you of that for however long he has been allowing me to do so. The Catholic Church is Satan's church. And Mary's an example. We honor her as queen and we call her blessed because in Luke, 1 Luke verse 48, Mary says all generations will call her blessed. Because, yes, because, in his because she gave birth to Jesus Christ who is come. Jesus Christ is come 
in the flesh. Okay? She gave birth to the body that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Alright? She did not give birth to God. Okay? Meaning that she created God? No. She gave birth to a body. Jesus Christ is come. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. The Word was made flesh. Okay? God was manifest in the flesh. Okay? All right? Do you understand? All right? Mary gave birth to the body that the Word, okay? The Word was made flesh, okay? Okay? She did not give birth to God, meaning that she did not create God. When they say, Mary the mother of God, that's what they're saying. Hence, as we have just, as I have showed you the evidence, when they call Mary the mother of God, they are worshiping the woman above the child, as you have already heard, given evidence out of the two Babylons. Okay? Nineteen fifty four encyclical, the Queen uh, to the Queen of Heaven says Mary deserves the title because she is Mother of God and because of her intercessory power, as we saw, for instance, at the wedding feast of Cana. Her intercessory power? We already read there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Okay, all right, but see. I already had this planned, brother. Going to read to you from the Catholic Bible. Uh, their verses uh, 197, uh, 167 on to uh, 967 on to 970. Pause it and read it. Here, can you see that? All right. She is our mother in the order of grace. By her complete adherence to the Father's will, to His Son's redemptive work, and to every prompting of the Holy Spirit, the Virgin Mary is the Church's model of faith and charity. Thus, she is the preeminent and wholly unique member of the Church. Indeed, she is the extreme realization of the Church. Her role in relation to the Church and to all humanity goes still further. In a wholly singular way, she cooperated by her obedience, co-redeemer. Okay? Faith, hope, and burning charity in the Savior's work of restoring supernatural life to souls. For this reason, she is a mother to us in the order of grace. The motherhood of Mary in the order of grace continues uninterruptedly from the cons from the consent when sh which she loyally gave at the annunciation and which she sustained without wavering beneath the cross until the eternal fulfillment of all the elect hmm. taken up to heaven she did not lay aside the saving office listen to this language Taken up to heaven, she did not lay aside the saving office, but by her manifold intercessions continues to bring us the gift of eternal salvation. You heard that right. Mary, they teach, brings you eternal salvation. Therefore, the Blessed Virgin is invoked in the church under the titles of Advocate. We have an advocate with the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Helper. Capital H here. That be the Holy Ghost. Our Lord Jesus Christ was our Father. Benefactress. And mediatrix.
I can't wait for the day when God destroys Roman Catholicism. Roman Catholicism is the religion of hell. Mary's function as mother of men in no way obscures or diminishes the unique mediation of Christ. That's not what they just said in their own writings. This is what is known in Orwellian speak, double speak, sophistry. This is what Satan is good at. This is dragon speak. Okay? But rather shows its power. But the Blessed Virgin's salutary influence on men flows forth from the superabundance of the merits of Christ, rests on his mediation, dependent, depends entirely on it and draws all its power from it no creature could ever be counted along with the incarnate word and redeemer but just as the priesthood of christ is shared in various ways both by his ministers and the faithful and no marvel uh for satan himself is transformed into an angel of light and no marvel either that his ministers are transformed as the ministers of righteousness okay and as the one goodness of God is radiated in different ways among his creatures, so also the unique mediation of the Redeemer does not exclude, but rather gives rise to a manifold cooperation, which is but a sharing in this one source. Let me read that to you again. Okay? This, this highly intellectual. This, this, is, this is devil speak. Okay? All right? Pay attention. And as the one goodness of God is radiated in different ways among his creatures. Oh, so wait a minute. That means that oh, you could be a Mormon and go to heaven, right? Or you could be a Jeho. Or you could be a Muslim. Or you could practice Kabbalistic Judaism. Hmm? Huh? Or a Hindu. Or Buddhist, right? So also the unique mediation of the Redeemer does not exclude, but rather gives rise to a manifold cooperation, which is but a sharing in this one source. Do you understand what I just read to you? Do you understand what I just read to you? There's right there, veiled, subtle, they just said to you that there's more than one way to go to Jesus. One way to go to God. What did Jesus Christ say? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Not according to these scumbags. And here, I want to show you this. From Brother Alberto Rivera. Here, here's where they... okay. All right, they're just going to read this one little paragraph here, this one little thing, and uh, Brother Alberto Rivera's thing. Okay, okay, all right, let me see. Everything's backwards. I don't know if you can see that. We're going to be reading this right here, right here, okay? Please pause that and read it if you can. Another verse the priests hate. And if any man sin, we have an advocate, a defense lawyer with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Speaking of a lawyer, the Roman Catholic institution conned the followers into believing and its pure Baal worship, okay, which we will look at. The following is not found in the Bible. The Roman Catholic institution says, Jesus is up in heaven as judge. Without mercy, no one is allowed to plead their case with him. So Mary is sitting up there in front of him as a suffering mother full of compassion and understanding, begging her son to forgive and have pity on these Roman Catholics who faithfully pray to her and believe she is the co-savior and co-redeemer, claiming she shed her blood at the same time Jesus did when he was crucified because of her pain and suffering for mankind. And 
and the and they and the Catholics uh, twist that with when they say and a sword shall pierce your own heart also or whatever. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. You know, John Damascene said, when she became mother of the Creator, she became queen of every creature. Remember, in 1 Kings 2.20, King Solomon, and who was he? The son of David, that line of kings in the, in the line of David, said to his mother Bathsheba, who was seated on a throne on his right hand side, he said, make your request, mother, for I will not refuse you. So <laughs> we, we, we read it. We read the context. Um, okay, you, you jerk. You scum! We read it. So not only did Solomon, not only did Solomon refuse her, but it kind of ticked him off, and because of that, it started the snowball of people being put to death. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, come. <laughs> Could today be the day? Again, why would Jesus change this? So Mary's queenship is a share in Jesus' kingship. And scriptural basis is also found in other places too. Song of Psalm, uh, Song of Songs 4 8. The Song of Songs 4 8. Okay? Song of Songs. Song of Songs. Song of Solomon. 4-8. All right. All right. Song of Songs. 4-8. Uh, the thing about the Song of Songs, it's not talking about Mary. It's talking about the relation between Christ and his church, his bride, those who are saved. Okay. Uh, it's talking about Solomon's favored wife. Yes. But for us today, the instruction in righteousness is this is how Christ sees his body, the church of the living God, not his mother. But, okay, uh, Song of Song, Song of Solomon's, Solomon's Song, chapter 4, what do we want? Verses 8, on to verse 12. Come with me from Lebanon, my spouse, the church of the living God. With me from Lebanon, look from the top of Amana, from the top of Shinir and Hermon, from the lion's dens, from the mountains of the leopards. Thou hast ravished my heart, my sister, my spouse. Thou hast ravished my heart with one of thine eyes, with one chain of thy neck. Because we are washed in the blood of the crucified one, we are spotless before God in standing. Okay? Okay? And when God sees us, Washed in the blood of the crucified one, okay, we are beautiful unto him because we are part of his body, of the body of Christ, okay? We are of his bones, of his flesh, okay? He cannot deny himself. This is talking about his love for his bride, the church of the living God, those who are truly saved, born again, converted, okay? That's what this is talking about for us today in this dispensation for our uh, instruction and in righteousness, okay? How fair is thy love? Oh, let's read verse 9 again. Thou hast ravished my heart, my sister, my spouse. Thou hast ravished my heart with one of thine eyes, with one chain of thy neck. How fair is thy love, my sister, my spouse. How much better is thy love than wine, and the smell of thine ointments than all spices. Thy lips, O oh my spouse, drop as the honeycomb. Honey and milk are under thy tongue, and the smell of thy garments is like the smell of Lebanon. A garden enclosed is my sister, my spouse. A spring shut up, a fountain sealed. Okay? The Psalms, uh, Psalm 45, verse 11. Psalm 45, verse 11, okay? Psalm 45, verse 11. <laughs> and, 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 and then, and then, and then we're, you're going to hear something that's just, you're going, going to floor you, and it shows you. 
just shows you the evil heresy of the Roman Catholic Church. Psalm 45, uh, verse 6 on to verse 14. Verse 6 on to verse 14. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore God thy God hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Verse uh, Psalm 45 is in context talking about the Jews. The Hebrews. The line taken out of Shem, which Mark the messenger is not of. Okay? All thy garments smell of myrrh and aloes and cassia out of the ivory palaces whereby they made thee glad. King's daughters were among thy honorable women. Upon thy right hand did stand the queen in gold of Ophir. Hearken, O daughter, daughter of Israel. Okay? And consider and incline thine ear. Forget also thine own people and thy father's house. So shall the king greatly desire thy beauty. King, our Lord Jesus Christ, thy beauty, the children of Israel. Okay? And since we, the church of the living God, have been grafted into the tree of the Jew, we are part of the tree of the Jew. That's when the scriptures talk about they are, all, uh, they are not all of Israel who are of Israel. Okay? Okay? Why? That's referring to us being grafted into the tree of the Jew. Okay? In context, this is clearly speaking about the Jewish Hebraic people. Okay? So shall the king greatly desire thy beauty, for he is thy Lord, and worship thou him. And the daughter of Tyre shall be there with a gift. Even the rich among the people shall entreat thy favor. It's talking about the Jews. Okay? Okay? Not Mary. Okay? Now, now here, hold, hold on to you. Hold on. Grab on for this. Classic, satanic, twisting of scripture classic Catholic defamation of the scriptures twisting yea hath God said right here and in the book of Revelation there Mary is the woman clothed with the sun in Revelation 12 it says quote a great and wondrous sign appeared in heaven a woman clothed with the sun with the moon under her feet and a crown <laughs> of 12 stars on her head. <laughs> in, in the description box, there will be a video. Oh, and by the way, there was a, a highly intellectual guy trying to defend David Wood, who said, uh, made, who implied that I never make mistakes or claim that I never make mistakes. Um, I make mistakes, and my mistakes are on the channel here, and you can see my mistakes, and you can see how I, uh, how the Lord corrected me through the scriptures of my mistakes. Okay, I leave them up so you can see them, unlike others who hide them. Okay, you can see my mistakes, and you can see how the Lord corrected me of my mistakes. Okay, I believed for a while that in Revelation chapter 12, that war in heaven happened already. It has not happened already. Hence the correction and repentance, the part you'll see it in the description box. But we go through Revelation chapter 12. Now, the Catholic says that Mary was a virgin. Okay, that she never had any children, even though the scriptures plainly declare Jesus her firstborn son. Firstborn. Why would, why would God use the term firstborn if Mary had no other children? I am the only child of my father. He does not call me his firstborn son. I am his only son. Okay, firstborn is, reply, is regarded for the firstborn of many children. Mary had many other children. But, okay, if this was Mary, which it is not, Catholic, a crown of 12 stars on her head? So, wait, Mary had, did Mary have 12 children? We don't know how many children she had. 
we know that she had more than Jesus. But, okay, let's read. Um, like I said, the video in the description box. We we go all over this. This 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 is this is what Catholics do. Yea, hath God said. Revelation twelve verses one and two. Okay. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve straw stars. Crown of twelve stars. The twelve tribes of Israel. Um, this woman is not Mary. This woman is Israel. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Verse 5. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up in unto God and to his throne. Okay. This is talking about Israel. Not Mary. Okay. Jesus is descended from Israel of the tribe of Judah. From salvation is of the Jews. You sick replacement theology scumbags. Okay. Salvation is of the Jews. Okay, the church has not replaced Israel. All right, the woman with the crown of twelve stars, the twelve stars, the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. The woman here is Israel, not Mary. Okay, this is talking about Israel, not Mary. Watch the video in the description box. Okay? And to you, you, whatever your name was, uh, highly intellectual, defending David Wood. Yeah, I make mistakes. You can see my mistakes. And you can also see how the Lord corrected me of my mistakes and how I publicly uh, did right correcting those mistakes through Scripture. Unlike other uh, upper echelon King James Bible believing preachers out there who hide their mistakes and don't want to admit to them and cover their tracks. Oh. Oh. All right. We're almost done with this. Wow. You know, it goes on to say that this woman would give birth to him who would rule over all the nations. This has to be Jesus. So this Jesus. woman, as his mother, has to be Mary. It's not Mary, you idiot! You scoundrel, scumbag, lying devil! You pond scum, vomitous puke bag! No, it is not! It's Israel. Hey, hey, you're offended me calling this guy, look at that! He's a Jesuit! Okay, he's a liar! He's a devil! He is teaching contrary to scripture! I hate every false way! This guy is my enemy! It's not Mary, it's Israel! She had a crown. That makes her a queen. And it says she's in heaven. So she's the queen of heaven. Again, that is what we, why I should say we, we, we have this tradition in the Catholic Church. Now, Mary is queen not only because of her divine motherhood, but because God has willed her to have an exceptional role in the work of salvation. She's not our savior, but she plays a role. That's why the Litany of Laredo calls her the queen of many things, the queen of martyrs, the queen of apostles, the queen of confessors, the queen of virgins, the queen of all saints. You get the point. Remember, the queen doesn't take away from the king. The queen leads us to the king. That's Mary's role. And we are, and I, we just went through the catechism, and we showed you what Brother Alberto Rivera shows, and we already went through the scriptures. Th this guy's a lying pond scum. Okay? Yes, Jesus is the only way to the Father, but there are many ways to Jesus. You heard it! There are many ways to Jesus. So... So, why not be a Muslim, right? A Muslim. Well, they don't believe it. Well, Jesus was a prophet, right? But, okay, never mind Muslim. Why not be a Mormon? Hmm? Hmm? Oh, oh, why not be a Unitarian? Hmm? 
Hmm? Why not be a Buddhist? Why not be a Hindu? Huh? Why not? There are many ways to Jesus. Jesus is God, the Father, right? He's saying there are many ways to God then. And see, this is all smokescreen, the ecumenical smokescreen. Because once we, the Church of the Living God, are redeemed, uh, taken out of the way, these are the monsters that you guys, you Christians, that get left behind, you're going to be dealing with these guys when they're going to be truly in power. They're in power already, but we, who uh, he who now letteth will let until he, the Church of the Living God, be taken out of the way. Okay? You know, um, how did Peter find Jesus? Peter found Jesus because of his brother Andrew. Andrew brought Peter to Jesus. Who brought Nathaniel to Jesus? Philip. I brought my family to Jesus. And there's no better way to Jesus than his own mother. Okay, that's it. We're done. We're done. I can't. I can't. I can't handle one more of this. There's no more notes to be. Uh, the, okay, this this guy. Okay, here. Bear with me here. Okay. All right. There we go. Get rid of the browser. Big pardon. Yes, remove browser. There we go. There you go. There you go. Now, let's talk about this Queen of Heaven. Okay? He said that Mary is the Queen of Heaven. Their Mary, the Roman Catholic Mary, is the Queen of Heaven. What is that? What are you talking about, Brad? Jeremiah chapter 44, verses 15 on to verse 23. Then all the men which knew that their wives Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt in Pathros, answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven. Yeah. And to pour out drink offerings unto her, as we have done, we and our fathers, our kings and our princes, in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then had we plenty of victuals and were well and saw no evil. But since we left off to burn incense, to the Queen of Heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things, and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. And when we burn incense to the Queen of Heaven, and poured out drink offerings unto her, did we did we make her cakes, the little uh, wafer cookie, to worship her? <laughs> and pour out drink offerings unto her without her men? Oh, and also, um, in that video, which we I, can, I couldn't take anymore. Sorry, brother. Uh, no, I'm not. But um, he talks about um, about what worship is. In the, uh, in the description bar, box, we go through the scriptures. What is worship according to scripture? The heart of worship. In the description box, okay? And when we burned incense to the Queen of Heaven and poured out drink offerings unto her, the wine in the wine glass... And did make her cakes to worship her, the wafer cookie, okay? And pour out drink offerings unto her without our men? Then Jeremiah said unto all the people, to the men and to the women, and to all the people which had given him that answer, saying, the incense that ye burned in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, ye and your fathers, your kings and your princes, and, and the people of the land, did not the Lord remember them, and came it not into his mind, so that the Lord could no longer bear because of the evil of your doings and because of the abominations which ye have committed? Yeah, the mass the way for cookie, everything that Catholicism is, which is actually 
the Babylonian religion, okay, is evil and God hates it. Okay? Therefore your land is, des is a desolation and an astonishment and a curse without an inhabitant as at this day. Because ye have burned incense, and because ye have sinned against the Lord, and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord, nor walked in his law, nor his statutes, nor in his testimonies. Therefore this evil has happened unto you as at this day. Now the okay, and now while we're at this, go to uh, Jeremiah chapter seven. Jeremiah chapter seven. So yeah, here here's your Queen of Heaven, Catholic. And it's spoken against. God hates it. What is the queen of heaven in scripture? Oh, Diana of the Ephesians. Semiramis of the Baalite religion, of the Babylonian religion. It's Satanism. Okay? Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 17 on to verse 20. Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood and the fathers kindle a fire. The women need their dough and make cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. Do they provoke me to anger, saith the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? And as in the previous video, God is not the author of confusion but of peace. The, the previous video about the satanic trinity you that that barren Bob okay the Trinity is meant to confuse you <laughs> uh, therefore thus saith the Lord God behold mine anger and my fury shall be poured upon this place upon man and upon beast and upon the trees of the field and upon the fruit of the ground and it shall burn and shall not be quenched and go to second Chronicles chapter 36 Second Chronicles chapter 36. All right. Second Chronicles chapter 36. Verses 14 on to verse 21. Moreover, all the chief of the priests and the people transgressed very much after all the abominations of the heathen. <clears throat> and polluted the house of the Lord which he had hallowed in Jerusalem and the Lord God of their fathers sent to them by his messengers rising up betimes and sending because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place but they mocked the messengers of God and despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people so there was no remedy. You can repent of this and come to the Lord on His conditions, on His terms, broken of your self-righteousness, having godly sorrow, and in fear of the Lord you call upon His name and He save you, hopefully, if you truly are broken and contrite. Okay? You can repent. But see, once we, the Church of the Living God, get redeemed, it's too late. Hence, the time of Jacob's trouble, the time of God's wrath for seven years on this earth. Now is when you can get saved. Like that. Let's continue. Therefore he brought upon them the king of the Chaldeans, who slew their, who slew their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary, and had no compassion upon young man or maiden, old man or him that stooped for age. He gave them all into his hand. And all the vessels of the house of God, great and small, and the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the treasures of the king, and of his princes, all these he brought to Babylon. And they burnt the house of God, and break down the wall of Jerusalem, and burnt all the palaces thereof with fire, and destroyed all the goodly vessels thereof. And them that had carried from and them that had escaped from the sword carried he away to Babylon where they were servants to him and his sons until the reign of the kingdom of Persia, to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah until the land had enjoyed her Sabbaths. For as long as she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath 
to fulfill three score and ten years. Yeah. Yeah. What Catholicism has done and is doing is bringing on such a transgression, such an abomination that sooner or later, once, once the body of Christ be redeemed, But they mocked the messengers of God and despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people till there was no remedy. Till there is no remedy. Gone past the point of no return. America has gone past the point of no return. Individually, not so. But as a nation, gone past the point of no return. Why is the Lord tarrying? I don't know. But when we get redeemed, now now go to Genesis chapter ten. We have to this thing about Babylon, okay? Genesis chapter ten and um, Nimrod, okay? Nimrod, all right. Genesis chapter Genesis chapter ten, verses six on to verse ten. And the sons of Ham. Ham, Ham, uh, Ham, and of Ham was the Canaanite, okay? Japheth, Shem, Japheth, and Ham. Shem, the Asiatics, such as the Jews, the, the Hebrew people out of Shem, but the Chinese, Japanese, the Koreans, stuff like that. Japheth, okay? The Europeans, the white man. Ham, the Egyptian. The Africans. Okay? And the sons of Ham, Cush and Mizraim and Phut and Canaan. And the sons of Cush, Sheba and Havilah and Sapta and Rama and Sapteka. And the sons of Rama, Sheba and Didan. And Cush begat Nimrah. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore, it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord, and the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, and Erech and Akkad and Kalne in the land of Shinar. Okay? Now, Shinar. Shinar. Uh, Genesis 11, verses 1 and 2. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and dwelt there. Shinar, the uh, area and land of Nimrod. And here in uh, Genesis 11, verse 3, And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick, and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. Verse 4, And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. In the land of Shinar, the land of Nimrod. The Babylonian religion. Okay? And while we're at this, go to Zechariah chapter 5. A brother had asked me about a while ago about Zechariah chapter 5. Check this out. Check this out. Okay? Check this out. Zechariah chapter 5. Zechariah is right after Haggai, right before Malachi, not Malachi. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't, brother. Uh, Zechariah chapter 5, verses 5 under verse 11. Then the angel that talked with me went forth and said unto me, Lift up now thine eyes and see, what is this that goeth forth? And I said, What is it? And he said, This is an ephah that goeth forth. He said, Moreover, this is their rem resemblance through all the earth. And behold, there was lifted up a talent of lead, and this is a woman that sitteth in the midst of the ephah. Woman, who is this woman? And he said, This is wickedness. Woman sitting in the place of the ephah. And he cast it into the midst of the ephah. And he cast the weight of lead upon the mouth thereof. 
Then lifted I up mine eyes, and looked, and behold, there came out two women, and the wind was in their wings, for they had wings like the wings of a stork. Angels have wings, right? No, they don't. Right here, verse 9 in Zechariah chapter 5 is where Catholicism, you know, Da Vinci and all these idiots who paint angels with wings, they, their, their wings are feather, feathery like the wings of a stork. Where do they get that from? They pervert scripture from right here. Right here. Right here. Verse 9 is where the devil perverts scripture <coughs> and paints angels having wings like a stork. They steal it from right here. Okay, this is where the this right here is where they steal that from. Okay? And they lifted up the ephah between the earth and the heaven. Then I said to the angel that talked with me, Whether do these bear the ephah? And he said unto me, To build it in house in the land of Shinar. 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 Relegated unto who? Nimrod. And it shall be established and set there upon her own base, Mother Church. First Kings. First Kings. You know, when it comes to about this Roman Catholic Mary, Semiramis, um, who is it actually? Well, here's a good example. Go to 1 Kings chapter 16, verses 29 on to verse 33. And in the thirty and eighth year of Asa, king of Judah, began Ahab, the son of Omri, to reign over Israel. And Ahab, the son of Omri, reigned over Israel in Samaria twenty and two years. Samaria, Samaramis. And it came to pass as if it had been a light, light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made the counterfeit uh, feast and the calves. These are your gods, okay? I forget what video I talked about that in, but it's a recent video, okay? Okay? But here, the stigma, the, Jer uh, the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Okay, kind of the brand that uh, Nicodemus who went to Jesus by night, okay, <clears throat> that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbal, king of the Zidonians, went and served Baal and worshipped Baal and worshipped him. And he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a grove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel than all the kings, uh, Lord God of Israel, to anger. Let's, and Ahab made a grove. And Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. And while we're talking about this lovely woman, uh, look at uh, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 4. For it was so, when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord, that Obadiah took an hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. Jezebel. Yes, Jezebel, the wife of Ahab, manipulated her husband. Ahab was a wimp. Ahab was a sissy. Okay? And if Ahab were in front of me, I'd call him such and kick him in the stones. Okay? He was a wimp. Okay, he was. His wife manipulated him. Jezebel, the foundation of feminism. Well, it's actually Semiramis, but scripturally, Jezebel. And the curse, what did God say to, unto Adam? Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. And see, feminism is doomed to fail because it is that man of sin, the son 
of perdition. And the Catholic Trinity that will be on the earth during the time of Jacob's trouble, they're all going to be male. See, feminism is just another way for Satan to uh, lift up his nose at God and to cause you to sin against God. Okay? And while we're looking at this, uh, look at verse 13. Uh, and in, uh, in chapter 18, this is when God, through Elijah, does a magnificent work and brings the people, uh, brings a revival. Okay? To the people of Israel. In the context here. Uh, because he, he builds an altar of 12 stones. Of the 12, signifying the 12 tribes of Israel. And fire comes down. Elijah calls fire down and stuff like that. Okay? Alright? But verse 13 in chapter 18. Was it not told my Lord what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord? How I hid an hundred men of the Lord's prophets by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water? Jezebel said, but I thought Ahab was the king. Yes, Ahab was the king ruled by his wife. And while we're here, okay, let's read verses 17 now on to verse 19. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah that Ahab, Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, and that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou and thou hast followed Baalim. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal four hundred and fifty, and the prophets of the groves four hundred, which eat. at Jezebel's table. Eat at Jezebel's table. But yet Ahab was king. Uh, uh, 19, 1 Kings chapter 19. Okay. Uh, verses 1 and 2. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with how and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Yes, yes, Elijah, who mocked the prophets of Baal, killed them all. Yes, and Ahab goes and tells his wife Jezebel, "Honey, honey, did you hear what he did to your to the prophet? Oh, who was in control?" In the reign of Ahab. Ahab was the Ahab was the front, but behind there was a wicked devil witch. Controlling things. Kinda like smoking Joe. The puppet. Here's smoking Joe, the puppet of uh, Kamala Harris who works for the Vatican. But Ahab goes and tells his wife. And what does his wife do? Jezebel. Then Jezebel sent a message unto Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me and more also if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And of course, Elijah, who suddenly fears Jezebel more than God for a moment, he has a lapse there, and runs. While we're on this, go to 1 Kings now, 21. Okay? 1 Kings 21. Let's, let's look at the power of this Jezebel, this queen of heaven. Okay? Let's look at the power here. Okay. First uh, Kings twenty-one verses one under verse sixteen. Okay. Let's look at the power of Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And it came to pass after these things that Nabaioth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard 
which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. We've covered this in other videos before. Um, I think in the Woman of God video, which will be in this uh, the description box. But other than that, I know we've covered this before. I can't remember. We're going over it again, okay? And Ahab spake unto Nebaioth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a green garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house, and I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or, if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. And Nebaioth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me, that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would eat no bread. Or oh, he put his thumb in his mouth and cried like a little baby. He moaned and whined like a little girl who didn't get his way. Ahab was a sissy. <laughs> she is woman, hear her roar, right? But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? And he said unto her, Because I speak unto Nebaioth. Can't you just, the sense of this sissy Ahab, okay? I spake unto Nebaal, the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else, if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. <laughs> and Jezebel his wife said unto him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Uh, no, he didn't, lady. Excuse me. No, he didn't, woman. She did. Arise and eat bread. Let thine heart marry. Be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Nabal of Naboth, the Jezreelite. So what did she do? Just like uh, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Okay, which is Roman Catholicism. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal and sent the letters on to the elders and to the nobles that were in his city dwelling with Naboth. And she wrote in the letter, saying, Proclaim a fast, and set Naboth on high among the people, and set two men, sons of Belial, before him, to bear witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king, and then carry him out and stone him, that he may die. And the men of his city, even the elders of the, and the nobles, who were the inhabitants of his city, did as Jezebel had sent unto them, and as it was written in the letters which she had sent unto them. They proclaimed a fast, and set Nebaioth on high among the people. And there came two men, children of Belial, and sat before him. And the men of Belial witnessed against him, even against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme God and the king. Then they carried him forth out of the city, and stoned him with stones that he died. Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth is stoned and is dead. And it came to pass when Jezebel heard that Naboth was stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take thy possession for the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, which he refused to give thee for money, for Naboth is not alive but dead. And it came to pass when Ahab had heard that Naboth was dead, that Ahab rose up to go down to the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite to take possession of it. All because of Jezebel writing in the king's name? They have God said. Powerful little witch, wasn't she? She manipulated Ahab. Ahab was a wimp. And I would I would have said so to his face. Kicked him in the stones while I was at it. Now, this also coincides with in Proverbs. Proverbs 5, okay? And also, Proverbs chapter 7. You know, that the woman with the attire of a harlot. I'm not going to read that because we do got to... Well, well, let's see. Proverbs chapter 5, okay? More of this woman, this queen of heaven. <laughs> okay? Okay? 
Satan's church. Proverbs chapter 5, verses 3, on the verse 13. For the lips of a strange woman drop us in honeycomb. Her mouth is smoother than oil. Uh, you uh, cross-reference this with Proverbs chapter 7, uh, where it says, uh, verse 16, uh, wait, verses uh, 13, on to verse 21 in Proverbs 7. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face. And I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. For the good man is not at home, for he has gone a long journey. He had taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. Back to Proverbs 5, verse 3. For the lips of a strange woman drop us in honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life, her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Move thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house. Back to Proverbs chapter 7, uh, verses 6, on to uh, verse 13. For at the window of my house I looked through my casement, and beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths, a young man void of understanding, void of departing from evil, passing through the street near her corner, and he went the way to her house. Oh, where are the house of the whore today? The church buildings. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night, and behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. With the attire of an harlot. Yeah. <laughs> her feet go down to death, her steps take hold on hell, lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life. Her ways are movable that thou canst not know them. Yes. Yes. And the woman, and behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and soul of heart. Verse 11 in Proverbs 7. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Now is she without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. So she caught him and kissed him. With an impudent face set unto him, and we already read uh, verses 14 on to verse 21. Okay, go back to Proverbs 5, verse 7. Here's the warning. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house, lest thou give thine honors unto others. Lest thou give thine honors unto others, and thy years unto the cruel. Lest strangers be filled with thy wealth, and thy labors... Be in the house of a stranger. Okay? <laughs> and thou mourn at the last, when thy flesh and thy body are consumed, and say, How have I hated instruction, and my heart despised reproof, and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined mine ear to them that instructed me. Okay? All right, now go to Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. Okay? Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19, we want verses 21 on to verse 28. <clears throat> All right. Acts chapter nah, uh, what do we want? 19 on to verse. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do I got the right one? Uh, great uh, is Diana of the Ephrys. Ah, yes. 
Acts chapter 20. Wait a minute. No, you know, we're in the right place. We're in the right place. Acts chapter 19, verses 19 on to verse 28. Okay. Many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men, and they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. After these things were ended, Paul proposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have seen been there, after I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he went into Macedonia. So he sent into Macedonia two of them that ministered unto him, Timotheus and Erastus, but he himself say, stayed in Asia for a season. And the same time there arose no small stir about that way. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, Semiramis, Ishtar, Astarte, the Roman Catholic Mary, the Queen of Heaven, as Jeremiah uh, warns about, okay, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen, whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, Sirs, you know that by this craft, we have our wealth. Moreover, ye, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands. <clears throat> so that not only this, our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Roman Catholic Mary, excuse me, the, the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed uh, whom all Asia and the world worshipeth Diana of the Ephesians the Roman Catholic Mary the Queen of Heaven that they make cakes unto which God hates Samaramish Istar Astarte Isis the Roman Catholic Mary Okay? So, when he says we call Mary the Queen of Heaven, in a way, they're not lying. Be lying because the Queen of Heaven is talked about in Jeremiah chapter 44 and in chapter 7. And because the children of Israel worshipped the Queen of Heaven, wrath came upon them. <laughs> so to call, but to call the scriptural Mary the Queen of Heaven is indeed blasphemy but see when the Catholics call their Mary the Queen of Heaven in a sense they're not lying because they're not talking about the actual scriptural Mary they're talking about the Babylonian goddess Semiramis, Ishtar, Shimo, Shimu, Isis, Astarte, Diana, Diana of the Ephesians, Diana at Barwa's Mark of Peace okay Joyce Meyer whatever you want to call her <laughs> And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Roman Catholic Mary. Different. Okay? Now, go to Revelation chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17. When talking about this, we cannot avoid Revelation. Okay? The woman mentioned in Revelation chapter 12 is Israel. Revelation chapter 17. This is talking about Roman Catholic, Roman Catholicism, the Roman Catholic Church. Mystery of Babylon the Great, the mother of the mother. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Verse 15. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Okay? Let's continue in verse 2. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. And that video about abandoning Christianity 
uh, you see the religious leaders bowing before the Pope. Not the head rabbi, the Pope. Okay, let's continue. So, he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. You look at the processions of the cardinals and the bishops, the Catholics will argue, well, white and black, or yellow and gold, are the, no, purple and scarlet. Look at the profession processions of the bishops and the cardinals. It's purple and scarlet. Okay. During the time of Jacob's trouble, you'll see. Obviously. But let's continue. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of the abominations and filthiness of her fornications. Oh, all the denominations all out there all the Babylonian witchcraft and sorcery that you can shake a stick at, okay? And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And also, verse 18, And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. That great city is not Jerusalem. It's Rome. See, heretics and coadjutors want to say want to take away the attention from the Vatican and they'll go like David Wood after the Muslims. Or they'll say it's the Jews that rule the world. Only an idiot would believe that. Or someone who is ignorant. Okay? as we have talked about. Um, I think it is what it is a Jew. Um, it is impossible that the Jews are the ones who rule the world today. Okay? It's impossible. Because they are the tail today. And the Gentile, they are the head. That does not mean that God has forsaken the Jew. No, because the gospel was given on to the Jew first and also to the Greek. But see, that proves that it is impossible for the Jew to be the ruler of the world today. Okay? But anyway, so it's Rome. It's Rome. And Rome, uh, Revelation chapter 18, verse 7, how much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit the queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Final shot here in the two Babylons here. Okay. <clears throat> to justify this worship, the mother was raised to divinity as well as her son, and she was looked upon as destined to complete the bruising of the serpent's head, which it was easy. And how many, I've seen uh, here in town, there unfortunately is a Mexican store that has Semiramis statues standing on the serpent. At St. Mary's Catholic Church and School over here in Woodstock, Illinois, uh, in the back there's a picture of Mary standing on the serpent. If such a thing was needed to find abundant and plausible reason, reasons for alleging that Ninus or Nimrod, the great son in his mortal life, had only begun. The Roman church maintains that it was not so much the seed of the, of the woman as the woman herself. <clears throat> that was to bruise the head of the serpent. Like I said, um, you can check uh, these Roman Catholic uh, images of Mary standing on the serpent. Okay? We're talking about Semiramis here, the Babylonian goddess. Okay? In defiance of all grammar, she renders the divine denunciation, denunciation against the serpent. Thus, she shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise her heel. 
The same was held by the ancient Babylonians and symbolically represented in their temples in the uppermost story of the Tower of Babel, the Temple of Baalus, Di Diodorus Siculus tells us, there stood the three images of the great diviner divinities of Babylon, and one of these was a woman grasping a serpent's head. Among the Greeks, the same thing was symbolized for Diana, whose real character was originally the same as that of the great Babylonian goddess, the Queen of Heaven, that Jeremiah, God through the book of Jeremiah, denounces as evil. Was represented as bearing in one of her hands a serpent, deprived of its head, as time wore away, and the facts of Semiramis history became obscured. Her son's birth was boldly declared to be miraculous, and therefore she was called Alma Malter, the Virgin Mother. What's your alma mater going to college? What's your virgin mother? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dear brethren. Yeah. And uh, we got a little bit of time more, huh? Yeah, we sure do. Okay. Uh, let's read a little bit more here. Even in the mythology of our own Scandinavian ancestors, we have a remarkable evidence that Alma Malter, or the Virgin Mother, had been originally known to them. One of their gods called Hemadal, who is described in the most exalted terms uh, as having such quick percep percep perceptions as that he could hear the grass growing on the ground or the wool on the sheep's back, and whose trumpet, when it blew, could be heard through all the world is called by the paradoxical name the son of nine virgins, Malik. Now this obviously contains an enigma. Let the language in which the religion of Odin was originally delivered, viz. the Chaldee, he brought to bear upon it, and the enigma is solved at once. In Chaldee, the son of nine virgins. In, ba, in Ben Almut Tesha, but in pronunciation, this is identical with the Ben Almut Isha, the son of the Virgin of Salvation. That son was everywhere known as the Savior Seed, Zerah Hosha, and his virgin mother consequently claimed to be the Virgin of Salvation. Even in the very heavens, the God of Providence has constrained his enemies to inscribe a testimony to the great scriptural truth proclaimed by the Hebrew prophet that a virgin should bring forth a son whose name should be called Emmanuel. The constellation Virgo, as admitted by the most learned astro astronomers, was dedicated to Ceres. Dr. John Hill in his Urania and Mr. A. Jameson in his Celestial Atlas who is the same as the great goddess of Babylon. For Ceres was worshipped with the babe at her breast. Even as the Babylonian goddess was, Virgo was originally the Assyrian Venus, the mother of Bacchus or Tammuz. Virgo then was the virgin mother. Isaiah's prophecy was carried by the Jewish Jewish captives to Babylon, and hence the new title bestowed upon the Babylonian goddess. The birth of the great deliverer was to be miraculous, was widely known long before the, the Christian era, the era uh, before this dispensation. For centuries, some say for thousands of years before that event, the Buddhist priests had a tradition that a virgin was to bring forth a child to bless the world that this tradition came from no popish or Christian source is evident from the surprise felt and expressed by the Jesuit missionaries when they first entered Tibet and China and not only found a mother and a child worshipped as at home, but that mother worshipped under a character exactly corresponding with that 
of their own Madonna, Virgo Diepra, the Virgin Mother of God, and that too, in regions where they could not find the least trace of either the name of history of our Lord Jesus Christ having ever been known. Why is that? Well, Satan knew what God was going to do from the beginning. Satan was aware of it. So Satan did counterfeit. Hmm? And through what? Through many means, as we have just seen. Okay? The Roman Catholic Mary, dear friend, is the worship of the great goddess Diana, Semiramis, the queen of heaven, that is spoken against in scripture. Okay, and on this also go down to Second Kings. Second Kings. And Roman Catholicism today says, I said, we said a queen, we will never see any problems. Yeah. Uh, Second Kings chapter 9. Second Kings chapter 9. We want verses 7 on to verse 10. And thou shalt smite the house of Ahab thy master, that I may avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord at the hand of Jezebel. Jezebel synonymous with the whore of Babylon, the Roman Catholic Church. For the whole house of Ahab shall perish, and I will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Israel. And I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Basha, the son of Asia. And the dog shall eat Jezebel in the portion of Jezreel, and there shall be none to bury her. And he opened the door and fled. So, Jezebel, Jezebel and her religion shall eventually be defeated. Jezebel, what is that religion? The Babylonian, Egyptian, Roman Catholic religion. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Okay? When Catholics talk about Mary, they're talking about the goddess Diana. They're talking about the goddess Semiramis, Ishtar, Shimu, Astarte, whoever. They're talking about Jezebel. Okay? That's who they're talking about. They're not talking about the actual scriptural Mary. They're not. They're not. What they teach you about Mary, I, I recommend everyone, everyone, get a copy. Make sure it's, uh, I have two copies of this, unabridged. I have a study edition that is unabridged too, okay? But make sure you get the unabridged version. The one that you get from Chick Publications, from Mr. Smiley, that's the abridged version. You get the unabridged version, okay? Get this. It exposes exactly, well, the scriptures expose Roman Catholicism. But uh, the two Babylons is also a very helpful tool to help you, okay, to see where it all came from, its origin in Satanism, okay? All right? Now, let's go to Revelation chapter 2, about a little bit more about this Jezebel. Revelation chapter 2, okay? This Jezebel, Jezebel spirit is not in Scripture, but... How Jezebel was is a perfect type of the Roman Catholic Church. And Revelation chapter 2, verses 18 on to verse 23. And on to the angel of the church in Thyatira. Excuse me. Right. These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, 
which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat sacrifice and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. All you people who love the Jesus with the red words, uh, this is a Cambridge. It does not have red words, but other versions, uh, versions, excuse me, other copies of the scriptures have uh, red words, not versions. Beg your pardon. But other copies have red words in them. Here's your sweet, loving Jesus. And I will... Uh, verse 22 and 23. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death. You have a copy of the scriptures that has that in red words, dear friend? That's your Jesus. He's talking about killing children with death. The children of Jezebel. The children of Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. The whore of Babylon, Roman Catholicism. Okay? And all the churches shall know that I am he, which searcheth the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Now, let's read in Revelation chapter 18 some of the best news out of that. The, the best part of this video that we can look at. The destruction. The destruction of Roman Catholicism. Revelation chapter 18. Verses 1 and verse 10. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened, lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird, like the bird of the Trinity. Hence, Roman Catholicism. Roman Catholicism is essentially the Babylonian religion in modern times. That's what it is. Okay? It is Satan's church. It is Satan's religion. The counterfeit. The replacement. The anti. Okay? For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. Death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for one hour is thy judgment come. So the centuries that Satan through his church Mystery Babylon has been working to build this system that isn't even going to last seven years. It's going to be destroyed in one hour? That's Catholicism for you, friend. That's Roman Catholicism. That's the Baylite 
religion. That is Catholicism. And that Mary that that scumbag was talking to you about, that's nothing but Diana of the Ephesians, Queen of Heaven, which Jeremiah talked about, which God talked about through Jeremiah and condemned it. The Mary that Catholics talk to you about and worship is not the Mary of the Scriptures. The Mary of the Scriptures sinned. Oh! Yeah, she, uh, she said, Know you not that your father and I were sorrowing for you? Oh, you know, when he was among the doctors, and the Lord said unto her as a child, Woman, no, shouldn't I be about my father's business? Meaning, you know, doing the work of the father. Hmm? She lied, calling Joseph his father. And who better than Mary knew that Joseph was not the father of Jesus? sin and lying. Lying is a sin. Okay? She had more than one child. Or else why would God in two places uh, refer to Jesus as the firstborn? I'm the only born son of my father. Or uh, my fleshly father here on earth. Not the firstborn of my mother, but the uh, only born of my father. I'm not the firstborn of my father. I'm the only begotten son of my earthly father. Firstborn doesn't apply. Catholicism, dear friend, is nothing but the Babylonian religion packaged, put on a facade, and called Christian. It's Satan's religion. And it is the religion of the time of Jacob's trouble that's going to be promulgated and going to be um, you know forced upon people well uh, like I said um, true scriptural uh, worship uh, temple worship will be there for a while but that man of sin the son of perdition who is a man is going to come around and change times and laws looking like that Roman Catholic that feminine uh, queer looking Jesus that the Roman Catholics uh, tell you about who and the Jesus of Roman Catholicism is nothing more than Nimrod. That man of sin, son of perdition. Take your pick. That's going to be it for this video. And I hope you as the Church of the Living God take great care and caution with this. There was some of this that we did not touch on which may be for another video at another time. Okay, because they, 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 they twist the scriptures and say that Joseph, oh, his brothers were that of the other Mary. Oh, just crazy. Didn't touch on that in this video, but, you know, really didn't need to in this video. That might be for another time. But um, I want you to take, uh, take great consideration of these things that we looked at today and consider. If you're a Catholic, uh, you worship Mary and you're not even worshiping the true Mary of the scriptures you're worshiping a pagan deity that's going to be it for this video thank you so much for watching this if you do I said there are going to be links in the description box for you to consider um, this will be the final video of this week uh, got a big weekend here um uh, actually, I am going to be going away for a little bit, for just a day or two. And we've got things going on for the rest of this week. So this is going to be the last video for this week. Uh, Lord willing, uh, next Monday, we'll uh, uh, you know, come out with some more videos as the Lord sees fit. But this right now, today, this is going to be the last video for this week. Sorry, i got a, got a busy week. Got a busy rest of this week, so... But uh, thank you for those of us, for those of you who pray for us, who help us. Thank you. We need your prayers and we need all the help we can get. Pray for one another, brethren. Pray for one another. We love you all so very, very much, Church of the Living God. And those brethren and sisters who we are in contact with, thank you. So, going to get going now. Um, thank you so much again. We love you. 
and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, I just wanted to add this little piece to this. Uh, reading from the two Babylons again. Okay. Uh, the Roman church maintains that it was not so much the seed of the woman as the woman herself that was to bruise the head of the serpent. In defiance of all grammar, she renders the divine denunciation against the serpent. Thus, she shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise her heel. The same was held by the ancient Babylonians and symbolically represented in their temples in the uppermost story of the Tower of Babel, Babel or the Temple of Belus. Dia, Diodorus Siculus tells us that there stood three images of the great divinities, divinities of Babylon and one of these was a woman grasping a serpent's head. Okay? Among the Greeks the same thing was symbolized for Diana, whose real character was originally the same as that of the great Babylonian goddess, was represented as bearing in one of her hands a serpent deprived of its head. As time wore away and the facts of Semiramis history became obscure, her son's birth was boldly declared to be miraculous and therefore she was called Alma Mater, the Virgin Mother. Okay. You, you see this? Catholic Mary standing on the serpent. You see that? You see that? See that right there? Yeah. And, uh, and that, Oh, look at that. Uh, uh, with the bird pooping on her head, the third member of the Catholic Trinity. That's Semiramis. That's Diana of the Ephesians. That's the Queen of Heaven that Jeremiah talks about in Jeremiah chapter 44 and 7, which we already looked at. Okay, and, and there it is, even more so. And what is this a perversion of? What is this a perversion of? Genesis chapter 3. Uh, Genesis chapter 3. Uh, verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. The woman being referenced to is, uh, you can trace this back on to Revelation 12, Israel, not, uh, not, Mar not the Catholic Mary, okay? And I will put enmity, enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. You see? See this? But uh, look at look at look at that one, look at that one with little naked babies with wings, uh, uh, with wings, angels with wings, oh, the wings of a stork, okay, oh, and there it is again, on the serpent, okay, and and there there's a Marian statue with standing on the serpent, and there's another one with the you know the Semiramis and stuff like that, there's that. There, oh, there's that. Look at that. Even in St. Mary's Catholic Church here in Woodstock, they have this statue. And there it is. Oh, look at that one. You see that one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, and, and wow, look at that one. This is not the Mary of Scripture. This is the Roman Catholic Mary, Semiramis, Semiramis. Semiramis, Ishtar, Istarte, the Queen of Heaven, Diana of the Ephesians. Signified in Scripture, uh, also the Mystery of Babylon, the Great, the Mother of Harlots and Abominations of the Earth. Uh, the type of Roman Catholic of Catholicism is signified in Jezebel and her behavior. There you go. Just want to, I just want to show this to you about all these, you know, uh, uh, just so disgusting, so disgusting. Uh, and look, see, see, yeah, oh, and look at that, twins of a stork, yeah, light coming out of her, yeah, yeah. 
This is not the memory of the scripture. This is a pagan goddess. This is a pagan de deity. Just wanted to bring this to your attention again. Thank you so much for watching if you do. Bye-bye.